He's Hi. sorry about the delay. Facebook is changing up their platform, and apparently it's smarter than we are. Yeah, and I, so, I think um, I don't even know how to use the last one. So, <laughs> so hopefully it says we're live. It says we're going. It has us there, so hopefully you can see us um, because I'm not entirely Comment confident. You can't. That was a lame joke. Sorry. Okay. That was pretty lame. <coughs> so hopefully you're seeing us. And uh, I thank you for your patience. We're running a few minutes late. Yeah. But uh, those that are, are with us or are gonna gonna join us or are watching this now at a later time. Of course, if you're watching it later, you weren't really affected by this little glitch in time because well, you you're missed the entire later. thing. <laughs> so um thank you for listening and uh hope everything is is going well hope uh if you're not here in the seattle area hopefully you have sunshine because here it is downpouring we've had hail all day yeah. off and on i don't think i've seen this much hail ever in all my time living here and uh it is crazy times that we're living in. Yeah. So with that, I'll go ahead and, and pray over our, our next few minutes. Okay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that uh, that you're keeping us safe. We thank you that, that you have your hand on our lives, that you have a plan, that you have a purpose. We thank you that you've allowed us the amazing ability to congregate in this way over, over medium and that didn't even exist when you wrote the words in the Bible. When you walked the, the walked this earth, Jesus, you didn't have this ability. And I wonder what it would have been like if you did. But we thank you that we have this ability, we have this technology. We just ask that you will help us to make the best use of this technology today and, and in the future. Help, uh, help you as your word goes out today, as we discuss these things, that it will be beneficial and helpful to, to others. And as we share this with others, uh, may it benefit them and benefit them. And, and may this, this word that you've put on our hearts um, be multiplied through those that will hear this. We just thank you for, for this time. We thank you for, for this amazing time that we live in. And we just uh, ask you bless it in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's still... The gutter is overflowing. I mean, that's how much precipitation we are getting. So I want, I want to go, uh, go to John chapter four, specifically verses thirty-four through thirty-eight. You know, for those that that know your Bible a little bit, know that John chapter four is is where we see the story of the Samaritan woman, and. Uh, I know, Abby, that's one of your favorite yeah, stories. It's a story that actually changed my life. So, yeah, it's a really powerful story, that, that one. It is, and there are so many. I've, I've, heard, I've heard it taught on many times yeah. from many different perspectives. You know, Jesus' perspective, the Samaritan woman's mm -hmm. perspective. I've even heard it taught from the perspective of the well, going all the way back I've, to Joseph. I would love to hear that. Or, yeah. no, Joseph, going back to Jacob. And, yes. And, and all this time. Because mm -hmm. it's at Jacob's well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's the Samaritans and the Jews. And and all of the, uh, the different perspectives. But I want to go to the back half of this chapter. Mm -hmm. Verses 34 and thir through 38. This is after Jesus has had his discussion with the Samaritan woman. Mm -hmm. The disciples have now come back from, from buying food. They see him talking to the Samaritan woman. They see that he's been there. He hasn't eaten. And this, we pick it up in, in verse 34 where, where Jesus says this. Um, actually, let's go to 33. The disciples ask him this. Did someone bring you food while we were gone? Jesus explained to them, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God, the one who sent me. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. 
the harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is brought or is yeah is the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life what joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike you know the saying one plants and another harvests and it's true i sent you to harvest where you did not plant others had already done, done the work and now you will get to gather the harvest Sorry about that, a little bit of a distraction. I'm sorry, I'm Wait. trying to log in so that I can give you guys the verse in the comments to reference later, go on. So if we go, we go back to, to verse 34, um, the statement, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God, the one who sent me and from finishing his, and for finishing his work. Now, when I remember when I first read this, that, that struck me as, um, what do you mean? My nourishment comes from doing the will of God. Well, I think this is something that's important for us to, to realize and dwell on today. As we are, we're stuck at home. We are, now the weather stinks outside. So even if we want to sit on the porch where we did our first few videos, we can't do that. And so we, we hear all the stories of people going and, and hoarding all the food because they're so concerned about, about their stomach, about that physical hunger yeah. that they don't want to go hungry. Yeah. And physical hunger and, and feeding our, our physical bodies is something that's important and we need to do that. Mm -hmm. But we also need to be careful to not neglect feeding our spiritual body, right. feeding that, that spiritual man. Absolutely. And, and this is what Jesus is talking about when he says my nourishment does not come from the will of god mm -hmm. or does not come it, sorry that his nourishment comes from doing the will of god right because right, right. It, it's feeding that spiritual being that aspect that a lot of people even back then forgot about i know we get so wrapped up in our life today yeah. that we're go 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 and that's something that i know i have issue with from the time i was 12, 13 years old, I was go, 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 go with sports. And yeah, we talked and about church. this. Yeah, that that was your, your go-to. You were just go. And so, and then going back to school and, and doing school, being a parent, mm -hmm. working full-time. We planted a church in that time and yeah. being a, pretty much in full-time ministry the entire time I was doing that. Um, it's easy to even when you're doing ministry to neglect feeding your spiritual self. Yeah. And, and that's actually something that I want to touch on a little bit. You can even be in ministry. You can know scripture. You, you can, you can be a spiritual, um, a, a Titan spiritually. And you can, you could have a doctorate in theology, mm -hmm. but there's a difference between getting into the word for an educational aspect and getting into it for feeding yourself. Yeah, there is. And I would have never thought that was possible until I was in seminary, until mm -hmm. I was in, in Bible college and looking and, and being like, why do I, I'm getting all this knowledge. I'm in the word every day, but I feel spiritually dry. Yes. Because there's a difference between preparing it to help others and preparing it for your heart. Right. Um, That's and really so, good. and so look, just let that be a kind of reminder to you out there that just because you're in the Bible and you're reading every day, um, are you doing it in a way that you're getting the most out of it? Because I found that I could go through, if I was learning something for school, I could read four or five chapters. Yeah. But if I was doing it for myself, I could have one verse mm -hmm. and I could dwell on that for an hour and get more from that one verse. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the other thing about, you know, natural hunger is that if we only look at to fulfill our natural side of things, we'll always have those desires coming back where if we're looking for those eternal things, those spiritual things, those things of God, I mean, Jesus even says, if, if you go back a few verses says, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again because it, it's an eternal spiritual thirst yes. that that needs to be quenched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and 
as far as the thirst, spiritual thirst part, I don't know if you guys have ever had this happen um, in your lives, but I have in my life. So there's a lot of times where I have some kind of like craving for something, or I feel like I want something, but I don't know, like, what is it? What is it that I want? I'm not hungry. I'm not thirsty. I'm not, um, I don't know. I, I go through my checklist and oftentimes I found, not always, but oftentimes I found that those are times that I'm spiritually thirsty and I'm spiritually hungry. Um, and that's the way that it manifests in my life. So it is a thing. You can be spiritually uh, starving. Yeah. And I mean, and that's actually kind of the next point I want to make is that we have that hunger spiritually as well as physically. Mm -hmm. And we need to be feeding that spiritual hunger. Yeah. If we don't, just like physically, if if we don't eat, we're gonna be hungry. Our stomach's gonna growl. We're gonna start to feel drained. We're gonna feel worn down. We're gonna be nauseous. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start to eventually, if you do it long enough, you're gonna become emaciated. You're gonna you're going to lose your muscle. You're gonna lose um, dexterity. Color in your color. face. Yeah. Now, imagine if. If we went a month without eating, we would look drastically different than the way we do now. But how often do we as Christians go a month without going to church or being with other believers yeah. or getting into our Bible? Yeah. If we did that same thing physically that we do spiritually, mm -hmm. we would look drastically different. Yeah. And so when we operate that way, spiritually, where we're only feeding ourselves once a week, mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. if you only ate once a week, you would be pretty hungry by the end of that week. Right. But yet that's, that's, that's what we do spiritually. Mm -hmm. We go to church and expect that to be enough. Yeah. The reality is you have to yeah. feed yourself that's every good. day. Yeah, you do. And spiritual hunger and, and a physical hunger look different, but are both vitally important. One is not more important than the other. You need them both. Yeah, it's a survival thing. But yet, what gets me is that, and I've been guilty of this, how often do we do that? We go to church or we, we study once a week. We have a Bible study. And then we get to the end of the week. We get a few days down the road. And we're like, why do I feel so weak? Why yeah. do I feel so tired? Well, it's because we're not feeding ourselves. Right. So if we are not feeding ourselves physically, we understand, oh, I'm hungry. Right. It's the same thing spiritually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we shouldn't be surprised if we're not feeding ourselves that we're spiritually weak. Right. right. And I think as, as churches, we are spiritually weak in a lot of ways. Right. We are emaciated because we are not feeding ourselves. Uh, we have, you know, churches, and, and that's great, and with pastors and all that, but as we talked about in one of our earlier videos, um, pastors are not there to do the the ministry they're there to equip the church for yeah. the ministry mm -hmm. the others for ministry i guess in this way it could mm -hmm. kind of look like the church is a soup kitchen right it could be the food bank that's where you go to get the food well, that's still, a good one it's kind of like the food bank <laughs> you, you still have to you take that food you still have to take it home and make it yeah you still have to take to go home yeah. and put that together it's kind of like we were talking yesterday where what is said at church is conceived at home yeah you get the ingredients from church you get prepared you get taught but you have to go home and make it right and and that's that's how this works is that spiritually you need to be feeding yourself well can i ask a question then okay. that I, I think maybe people might be asking um so i you and i and and most people know the manifestations of not eating right the physical manifestations of not eating and not drinking mm -hmm. what would you say are the man the manifestations the physical manifestation i i guess of feeding yourself spiritually are there physical manifestations um as far as uh being able to, your thought processes and the way you respond to things or i, I don't know how does it exhibit in your life for people to know if they're not being spiritually fed? Like, I know you've been going over that, but. When we were created, God created us both spirit and flesh. Right. There was a duality within us. 
that we are both spiritual, we connect with God on a spiritual level, right. and flesh, you connect with each other. And along those same ways, because spiritual, the spirit and the physical are on, are kind of two different aspects of who we are, okay. they both need to be dealt with. Right, 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 right. So when you have two aspects, two parts of the same deal, they might look different, but they affect the whole person. And so when you are, a great example is kind of flipping this the other way. When Jesus feeds the 5,000, okay. he fed them before he taught because he recognized that they needed their bellies to be full to hear what he was saying spiritually. Exactly. Yes, that, that is good. And so, mm -hmm. in the same way, we need our spirit to be full if we're going to be successful physically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can tell someone who is being fed spiritually is that when they're walking through life because they just have an air about them. Mm -hmm. They're more encouraging. Yeah. They're, more, they're happier. They have a light about them. Mm -hmm. They have a, a, a bounce in their step, yes. a light in their yeah, eyes. Yeah, it's true. You know, we, I've heard that the, the eyes are the window to the soul. Mm -hmm. The eyes are physical. The soul is, is spiritual. Yeah. So that, that right there is you can look through somebody's eyes and tell where are they spiritually. Okay. I mean, we have that discernment as, as believers. Right. And it grows as, um, you, as you dig into the word and, and grow your relationship. With the if you find yourself in a situation like what mm -hmm. we're facing now, where the rest of the world is freaking out, but you have a peace about it and you continue moving forward. You continue pushing forward. You continue encouraging others. Mm -hmm. And you find that, that you're just being more encouraged and you don't understand um, the peace you have. Yeah. That's not naivety. That's not, um, that, that's not putting your head in the sand. Yeah. That, that is the peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. That that is a, one way that we can know, are we doing this or are we not? Are we right. feeding the spirit? If you are feeding the spirit, you're going to find that you are, you are happier. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel more energized. You're going to feel like you're, you'll be in a brighter mood. Yeah. And so, yes, there's absolutely physical. Well, and things begin to roll off of you that didn't before. Things that invoked fear don't necessarily um there are not I, I think especially the spiritual when it comes to we talk about mental health so much oh, yeah. going on right it's now connected when you are spiritually feeding yourself mm -hmm. your mental health gets better it's it does and, it absolutely and does. I, i'm a huge proponent of mental health and taking care of of your mentals yes. Yes. you know as uh as marshawn lynch said you got to take care of your mentals mm -hmm. you got to take care of your chickens <laughs> don't be mental <laughs> But I also think that we sometimes miss that mental health as spiritual health. That's so oh, that's good. Say that again. I think we sometimes confuse mental health with spiritual health. Okay. See, I secular society would lump it all into one. Yeah. But as a Christian, we know that we are spirit and we are flesh. Right. We know that we have the two sides. We know that the spirit it really affects the way we think. If we are feeding ourselves spiritually, we're going to be bound. We're going to be bound to that that mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. Right. Um, Our mind will be being renewed, actively renewed. And so, I think a lot of times these mental health deficiencies that we see are actually just spiritual, mm -hmm. the spiritual hunger. They can be. It's spiritual yeah. starvation. Yeah. Is it what can, it is. Oh, yeah. 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 And I uh, just to clarify um, some of what Jonathan has said, um, that is for me, I was diagnosed with PTSD and bipolar two disorder back in 2009 because of some horrible stuff that was going on in my life. And I went through therapy and I was taking mental health medications for a very long time. Um, and the more that I dug into the word, um, and into my relationship with the Lord and allowed the Lord to, and the Holy spirit to lead, uh, the way in my mental heal, in my healing and my processing of like the tra trauma that I experienced and my past and all of that. And I'm talking about, this is like 
over the last two years. It's very recent that the Lord has done this in my life. So that is, it, it, we're not saying that don't take mental health drugs and that mental health um, diagnoses aren't real or any of that, but that the Lord, um, that his word and being in his presence and, and everything that we're talking about right now, it is manifested in your mental health as well. Your spiritual health is a lot of times manifested in your mental health. Right? Right. Okay. I mean, I, you're absolutely correct there. <clears throat> um, to go back and, and kind of finish this thought, because there are other things I want to I'm touch so on from, from this, <laughs> um, okay. this scripture is that, you know, well, when we already touched on a point that I want to make, that um, spiritual hunger is a lot worse than physical hunger. As we just laid yeah. out, spiritual hunger ends up not just destroying your physical cells, but your eternal cells. Oh, it ends up destroying relationships, your thought processes. Um, it puts you in a place where, where you really can't function. And you really start to lose your will to move on. Wow, that is so good. I, I hope you guys can can kind of meditate on that thought because I think that's a really good, geez, that's good. Um, you know, and really the only way to satisfy that hunger is to be in your Bible every day, to be listening to sermons, to be talking with other believers. Yes. As iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. You know, Scripture tells us that... Um, we are to sharpen one another yeah. to be in these conversations yeah. to, to have these encourage these encouraging times um i know even doing this i can't see you guys and you might not even be seeing this and i might yeah. just be talking to myself hi martha i see you i can see you martha hi um but knowing that someone could be out there it's encouraging to me as i share this and it, it it's it's like i'm being virtually sharpened mm -hmm. in my life yeah um, yeah, it is. And it is just the thought that possibly someone's out there mm -hmm. who could be helping is, is encouraging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we abide in God and we operate in him and we do the stuff we know God's put on our, on our heart and we seek to grow in him, with him um, and become more like Christ, that is how we feed that spiritual man, that, that spiritual being, mm -hmm. and how we grow spiritually and get stronger spiritually. And I think you just said it right there. That's how we know that we're spiritually healthy is the more Christ-like we become, right? That's how you right. see the spiritual health is that person is Christ-like. Um, see, this is what I mean. This is the, just one verse. Mm -hmm. um, and we've spent this time, and we could spend more time expanding on this. Yeah. And I would challenge you that, if you like this verse, you don't want to move on, then you go back in there and you dig into to it yourself and see what it says to you. And yeah. you know what? Leave your comments. Uh, leave what you find in the comments. It'll help encourage us and yeah. encourage others that come to this video. But moving on to verse 35, you know, Jesus says, you know the mm -hmm. saying, four months between harvest and between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. I love this verse love because it, it shows that there is a process that we are to follow. There's a natural process. God is natural. He created the heavens. He created the earth. He created all these processes. God is incredibly uh, practical. Yeah. I, I've heard it said, and I've, I've repeated this multiple times. I think it's great. God is supernaturally natural. Um, and so everything that's natural has order because God is ordered. So when we look at yep. this, there's four months from when some, when the field's planted to the time when there's harvested. So in our lives, God might be planting something in our life and there's a process of sowing, cultivating and reaping right. that is followed. Right. And so that's natural order. It, it is very rarely in our life. Do we see where something is sowed into our life? And it all met, it shows up immediately. Yes. There is a, a process mm -hmm. where I think if we look back through our life, we can see where, where something was sown into our life, like that the seed of Christianity was okay. planted in our life by somebody. God cultivated it through life mm -hmm. or even influences. 
to where at some point we made the decision for Christ to follow Christ. And whoever was there at the time got to harvest mm -hmm. the other people's work. Yeah. And that's actually what Jesus is talking mm -hmm. about here mm -hmm. is that they're looking out over Samaria and Jesus is saying the fields are white with harvest. Mm -hmm. Now the disciples are confused because they're still thinking from the aspect of actual farming. But Jesus is thinking in, in terms of the hearts. Right. See, he's talked to the Samaritan woman. I know we talked about this before we came mm -hmm. on. The Samaritan woman went before them and shared what Jesus had done in her life. Yeah. And because of that, the whole city was ripe for harvest. It when, was because of her testimony. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which, let that be an encouragement to, to ladies out there. Yeah, even men out there that have made a mistake, that have continued to make mistakes, that, that feel like they're far from God and feel like that they're, they can't be uh, restored. Let they're this, of no good use. They're of no good use. That's Let a, this yeah. be an encouragement that it was because of her past, because they had known that, that mm -hmm. she had lived a life of promiscuity, that a life of selfishness, that when she came professing Jesus, professing what he had done Amen. and they could see the change in her in her eyes yes they could look through that window of the soul yeah. and look in and see what had happened mm -hmm. everyone took notice yeah. because of the drastic change that happened mm -hmm. and so let that be the an Jesus, encouragement the change that Jesus yeah. the, yes nothing of herself yeah that's the power is Jesus yes so that gives, it gives so much power to this idea that four months between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around. The fields are ripe for harvest. I feel there's something prophetic in here for us today in that we need to stop relying on... Hi, Scott. Um, we need to stop relying... on our traditions. We need to stop relying on, this is the way it's always done, this is how we have to do it. Because I really think God is saying right now, with everything going on, I really think God is saying, now is the time for you to take mm -hmm. action. Mm -hmm. Now is the time. Yeah. Do not wait. Do not, do not, okay, well, I'll do this when, when this, this COVID-19 is over. I'll do this when, do it now. Start now. The field is ripe for harvest. Mm -hmm. Your heart mm -hmm. is ripe for harvest. Yeah. Your neighbor, your, your family, is ripe for harvest. The growth is there. So do not wait because God is wanting to do something right now. He's asking, he's wanting you to dig in now. He's wanting you to go down deep into the city of your heart to dig into the word. Um, keep going on that, but I do want to share with you the New King James version of this last part. I think is really good. Verse 38, it says, I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors to reap. I mean, how amazing is that? That is exactly what Jonathan just explained. Uh, that's incredibly amazing and in that we get to walk into that. What is Scott saying to us? Watch your last one. Glad to see you're spending your time being productive during quarantine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. We're, we're glad you're using, we love using you. your time to, to bless us. To with join us. Guys. Yes. I Thank appreciate you. it. Um, you know, I was going to touch on, on what you were saying. That's actually what I was going to close with. Oh. Um, and I'll, I'll get back to that in a second okay. because I do okay. think that, that that is really powerful and really strong. And we'll, we'll tie this all together with that. Okay. Um, but, you know, there is a process that we follow. And processes are great. Processes help us, help give us boundaries to, to know how to get somewhere. And learn. And learn. Mm -hmm. But once we get, get to that point, you know what? Sometimes God says and we learn we need to push those things aside because God is doing something now. A new thing. He's doing a new thing. Yes. Um, Amen. And, and I know for me, one of the things that, that troubles me, and I've, I did this for years. i like, okay, I'm preparing. I'm getting prepared. When I'm prepared, 
I'm going to do this. <laughs> and <laughs> we, uh, you see this a lot with, with students, when with college there, students. Okay, I'm going to college. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get this degree. When I get out, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. But the reality is you're going through it. And, and God really blessed me. When I look back at, at my college years, God blessed me that when I was starting my, my undergrad, we planned, we started planning a church right about that same time. Yeah. So the first three years of my education, I was able to put to use what I was learning during the week yeah. on the weekend. Yeah. I was able to, to preach what I was learning. I was mm -hmm. able to encourage others mm -hmm. in, in this little tiny church as we're using it. People because I, I was. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is true in our lives. See, God will use you and he will harvest your gifts as he is sowing into you. And he'll allow you to sow into others mm -hmm. while he's reaping things out of you. Amen. He sows into you. You sow into others. Mm -hmm. He reaps. You reap. Yeah. It's not he sows into you. He reaps to make you the, the man or woman of God. And then you go and do it. But see, God does this in the midst of refining us. Yeah. In the midst of of the process so cultivate reap yeah. god sows mm -hmm. in that cultivation he uses us to sow into others yeah. he uses us to reap what others have yeah. sowed yeah and what's amazing is that when we reap those benefits it's actually god reaping something from us because there's 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 something about bringing somebody to the lord there's yeah. something that's, oh yeah i was just gonna talk when, about that when yeah. you get to pray with somebody who's hurting and then they come through and they they have freedom. There is nothing more encouraging than that. Oh, when, yeah. when we have our counseling sessions, we're in that, that counseling office. That is what we, we long for, is seeing people that are hurting come to healing. Yeah. And, and seeing so, your, testim what, your testimony, the, the stuff that, the pain and the experiences that you've gone through when you share your story and it, because of what you shared, a person's life has changed. That makes it all worth it. That's incredible. That's what Jonathan is talking about. Having those moments where even though you're hurting, even though you're struggling and it's still hard, mm -hmm. you share your heart and you share that the Lord is the one that's getting you through and, and all of those things in your testimony. And that empowers you to keep going. It's what keeps you going. You know, and that's, um, that kind of touches on the, the next two verses here. Verse 36, the harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is the people brought to eternal life. Mm -hmm. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester mm -hmm. alike. So <laughs> there is value in, in this massive spiritual value. I mean, he, he talks about the harvesters being paid well. As Christians, we are called to go and make disciples. We're called to, to bring them to Christ. Not bring them to just church membership, to warm in a pew, to be disciples, to grow. Yeah. And, and the disciples that we're looking for are disciples who can feed themselves. Right. Feed that, not, not physically, spiritually. Who can teach others how to feed themselves. Who can teach others how to make disciples. This is what we desire to be. Mm -hmm. And the wages of that is amazing. It's so fulfilling to see those that you've poured into into others mm -hmm. to go and do what you know they're capable of yeah. to use their potential and so Amen. and that's why i'm talking about the wages of when we get to heaven and we get to the pearly gates and jesus says well done my good and faithful servant we walk through into eternity saying this person's here this person's here this person's here because of what you did because of your influence that's what i i long for I long for that moment where I get there and people that I even realize are there because of my influence. They're there because of your influence. Mm -hmm. and, and we, I am there because of their influence. Mm -hmm. They're going to be people like that. So they're going to be looking at me and go, she's here. I influenced her. Yeah, and you that's, know? The paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is good wages. And the fruit they harvest is the people brought to eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, that, that is the amazing yeah. truth that's ahead of us. Yeah. You know, and that's what joy awaits the harvester and the harvested. Yeah. 
or the planter and the harvester, sorry. Because many times, and I hated this when I was younger. If I start something, I want to finish it because I want to get, I want to get the recognition that I planted that and I cultivated it and I want to be the one to get the fruit. But that's not the way God works a lot of times. A lot of times there's a long cultivation period from the time something's sown. And it's someone else that gets the joy of that. And that, that also, because I've had those thoughts as well, that places you in, in such high esteem. You're not the one that saves that person. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to their hearts through you sharing your story that he reaches them. The Holy Spirit reaches them, not, not me. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through me that reaches them. Right. And so there is absolute amazing value in both the planter and the harvester. Yes. We need them both. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's something that took me a while to, to accept that it is not about me. I, 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 I know I, I have I have this level of pride that I've had to swallow many many times throughout my life yeah and it was one of those where it's not about me it's not about you it's it's about God it's about saving these people it's about taking this time that we have it and using it for the best of better been of the kingdom of for furthering the kingdom of God. That's yes, I just went blank. <laughs> um, yeah, as we finish up that this this section of scripture, 38 says, I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work, and now you will get to gather the harvest. This is such an encouragement because God God recognizes the blessing that that we get when we're faithful to him to use what he's given us to walk how he's designed he's he's directed us I don't know why that was such a hard word for me to remember but when he when we walk the way that he's directed us he's gonna put us in positions where we reap things that we didn't sow where we we have opportunities that we didn't necessarily pave the way for mm -hmm. we just walk into yeah. and I don't know why God does that I don't know why God chooses to do it this way but I know from my own personal experience I have been more blessed when it's done God's way yeah. oh, for than sure. the way that's envisioned in my yeah. in my mind mm -hmm. and so when, when I when I look at this scripture I I'm thankful for the Samaritan woman. I'm thankful that if we go right into verse 39, it says many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus. And because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did, they came out to see him because of that change. I'm so thankful for that testimony because it, it, it changed that entire community. Yeah. Just that, that one testimony, and your testimony can do the same thing for the community in which you live in. When people see you change and you grow, yeah. but then you can continue, because it wasn't just her testimony, it was her willingness to go out and profess what God had done. Yeah. Go out and profess what God is doing. Profess what he has done. And, and be that influence that, that the Samaritan woman was in her community, be that influence in your community. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm thankful for that, but I'm so thankful for, for this idea of spiritual nourishment, of taking care of your spiritual being. And especially right now where some of us are essential employees and, and have to be working, but many of us are able to, to work at home. Even we thank you for that. We really do. Yes. That we're that you essential. Essential. The people that are working, especially the people in the grocery stores and stuff. I mean, they're the people that I've been seeing, and I really do appreciate all that you guys are doing. Um, it's just amazing to me. So, go on. So, 
we have this time where we can be feeding ourselves physically as well as spiritually. This, this can really be a time where so many are worried about getting too skinny because they're not eating enough physically, but you can become spiritually fat. If you will just, you can, if you use this time properly, you can become spiritually robust. robust. That's a good word. Mm -hmm. Well, I liked what you said earlier. You said a spiritual titan. A spiritual, like yeah. And so you have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to grow and mature without a lot of those, those outside. We don't have sports. We don't have, well, we have Netflix and we have a lot of movie theaters are putting stuff on the TV but we don't have a lot of the distractions that we have. So use that time that you would devote to something else. And I'm just as guilty as everybody else. Anybody who knows me knows <laughs> I, I love my sports and I, I love keeping up on that stuff. And I'm, I'm jonesing just a little bit for, for my racing and, and I miss March madness. I look forward to it every year and I'm missing it. I, I I will save you all the details of, of the withdrawals, but I can tell you that having replaced that with with these times, and and counseling and, and these other things that and I have conversations, conversations with your wife that are really spiritual and fantastic. Um. <laughs> yes, yes, that that is true. And having these times of connecting, mm -hmm. I am feeling stronger now spiritually than I was at the beginning of this. Yeah. Same. And I plan on coming through this stronger. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I challenge you to dig in, to yeah. use this time to come out stronger, to use this time as a testimony to others who see you smiling through it and happy mm -hmm. through it and pushing through and, and being successful in what's going on right now. Don't wait to get through this. Praise them in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Be strong in the middle of it. And keep pushing forward. Yes. Keep walking. Yes. And don't stop. Mm -hmm. I think the worst thing we could do is, is stop in this and get stuck. Yeah. Because so many people have gotten stuck in, in this what's going on. You know, how do we, what are we going to do? So many people have gotten stuck. We don't want to get stuck. Yeah. Amen. We want to continue to grow. God wants you to continue Be to grow. Be encouraged. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Be, Be encouraged. encouraged. And, and before, before you close and before we have um, prayer, there is a verse that I want to proclaim over us. So when you are finished, we'll do that. And I will. Um, why don't you prayer. go ahead and, and read that verse? Okay. So uh, it is going to be Revelations 12. I'm going to read you 12.10 through uh, 12. 12.10 through 12. Wow, that's hard to say. Um, and I'm just proclaiming it over our lives. And this is, this is something that I do is I use the word of God. I speak it out loud and I proclaim it over my life. And that is powerful, speaking out the word of God. So I'm going to be doing that right now. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, and by the way, this is John, John that we've been, you know, reading in his book. This is John in Revelation. So then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And then, oh, and they overcame him, sorry, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Um, yeah, that's right. Basically, they didn't love their lives even unto death. It's a little bit weird in this New King James version. But picking up in um, verse 12, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has uh, come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. And that's just talking about the end time. So 
the main thing that Jonathan and I, we, we use this verse a lot that we overcome by the blood of the lamb, right? That has covered us. So our sin is covered. And then the word of our testimony that the stuff that we've done, the Lord has, has forgiven us and he has set us free from that. And we no longer have to live that way. And he's given us a new life and eternal life. So your testimony is powerful. Um, and so I will just close us in prayer and um, we thank you all for, for watching. And those of you that are here, thank you. We love you all. Um, and we pray just that the Lord is going to bless you guys greatly. So uh, here we go. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Um, you are so good. We lift you up, God. We want to, we want to grow in our knowledge of you. We want to grow closer to you in our relationship with you and be able to be so sensitive to your spirit and to its leading. And um, we've been praying through uh, and speaking about over these, these last four videos, all of the benefits to digging in to a personal, really intimate relationship with you, Father. And I just ask, Lord, that you would meet us right now where we are that as as we press in and as we do these things and allow your word to come alive inside of us and to to penetrate those dark places and to move within us um, so much so that it, it flows out to others and we can begin ministering as well I pray Lord that you would just that you would pour out your blessing that you would meet us there God that our not enough would be more than enough for you father and that um I thank you that you can do that, that you can make our not enough more than enough. And I pray that you would do that. I pray that you would um, just minister the, to the hearts of your people, Father, through this time and continue to pull at their, at their hearts um, and their spirits, Lord, to be drawn close to you. And we just thank you for the opportunity to, to speak with them to do life with them, to pray over them, and to share what you are doing in our lives and to share the words that you've given us and what you're teaching us. You are amazing, God, and we love you, and we thank you for who you are. Um, lastly, I pray just a blessing over all of you. I pray that the Lord would be with you and that he would keep you safe and that you would um, not feel depressed during this time, that you wouldn't feel so isolated, but that you would be able to feel love, that you would be able to feel um, safe and sheltered and peace and joy and prosperity that is going to come from this, not just prosperity in your, in your physical life, but prosperity in your spiritual life. And Lord, we just thank you for what you do. And we thank you that you, you um, give to us really wisdom when we ask it, ask for it, Lord. And we just ask that you be glorified in all of this, that you, your name would be lifted high. Um, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here, guys. All right, guys.